Okay, so we're back onto physics again, and our first topic is entitled Collecting Energy from the Sun. So, there's a couple things you need to be able to do, and you need to be able to talk about photocells. So, photocells are just solar cells, um, uh, we call them PV cells sometimes as well. They're just the big solar panels that uh, you see in a lot of houses these days. You need to be able to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these. So the advantages are that they are low maintenance and they're robust, so they don't cost a lot of money to maintain because they survive quite well on their own. They don't use a fuel, so that means we don't need to ship anything to them. Um, they're long life, so when you buy them, they're going to last a very long time, so that makes them cheaper in the long run. They use a renewable resource, so we're not depending on um, fossil fuels here, so we don't have to worry about them running out. The sun is going to be there much longer than we are. So um, it's always going to be there for us, so we don't have to worry about that. And the next one is that they don't emit any pollution. Now the downsides to using photocells is that they don't work at night time. This might seem glaringly obvious, but it is actually a big problem because we use most of our electricity in the evenings, because that's when you turn all your lights on when you're at home and you're sitting and watching TV. So not being able to have that electricity supply during the during the night time means that they are not a reliable enough resource that they're the only way of generating electricity that we can use. And along with not being able to use them at night, you also can't use them if the weather is very cloudy. The other type of, or the other method for generating electricity that we need to be able to talk about are wind turbines. Now it might seem odd to you that wind turbines are in the bit about generating energy from the sun. But the reason for that is that the sun heats up our atmosphere and it doesn't heat it up evenly. And this causes um, changes in pressure in the gas that makes up our atmosphere, which causes it to move around, which causes the wind. So ultimately, it does boil down to coming from the sun. Don't worry, you don't need to know that. I just thought I'd explain so you knew what the deal was. So advantages of wind turbines. Again, they don't need a fuel. They are a renewable resource again, and they don't emit any pollution. The disadvantages are that some people think they are rather ugly, um, so they don't want them in their backyard. It's the NIMBY argument, not in my backyard. They don't necessarily disagree with them, they just don't want them where they can see them. Uh, the other downside to wind turbines is they depend very heavily on the speed of the wind. So if there isn't enough wind, they don't generate any electricity, and if there is too much wind, they don't generate any electricity. So that is a problem. And the other downside is that they only work in certain places, so you have to pick a spot where they'll work. That's why sometimes you see um, wind turbines popping up in different places, it's because they go around and test to see where would be the best place to put them. Because there's no point spending the money on building them in places where they're not going to generate as enough electricity. Now, if you're doing the foundation paper, that's all you need to know for this topic. If you're doing the higher, there is a little bit more to do. So, we need to know a bit more detail about how photocells work. Uh, photocells contain two different types of silicon. There's the N-type and the P-type. The N-type has loads of extra electrons in it, and the P-type has the ability to absorb lots of extra electrons. And the point where they meet is called the P-N junction. Now, light transfers energy, and it transfers energy in little packets, and we call those packets photons. Now, each photon can transfer energy to one electron. So if one photon comes in and it gives one electron in the n-type enough energy, that electron can move to the p-type silicon. And if I've got electrons moving, that means I've got an electric current, so I'm generating electricity. Now some of the important points here are it can only be one photon that interacts with one electron, and it gives the electron enough energy to move from the n-type to the p-type silicon. Um, we also need to be able to comment on how much electrical energy the photocells output and that depends on the intensity of the light, so higher intensity, more electricity, the surface area that's exposed, so how big your solar panel is or how much of it is being hit by light, and again bigger area, more electricity, and the distance from the light source to the photocell. So the further away the light source is from the photocell, the less electricity we will make, mostly because you're in reducing the intensity of the light. 
Okay, and the last thing for the higher paper is passive heating. So this is basically where we're going to use the energy from the sun to heat up buildings or rooms without using electricity. So, first thing we need to know is that the sun is very, very, very hot. It might sound obvious, but it's a really important point for this. Because it is so hot, it emits infrared radiation at a very short wavelength. So hot things emit short wavelength infrared radiation. Because it's a short wavelength, the radiation can travel through glass. Now, lots of buildings are designed so that the infrared radiation passes through the windows during the day and then warms the walls and the floors. Now, once the walls and the floors get warm, they begin to emit infrared radiation. Now, another glaringly obvious statement, the walls and the floors are not as hot as the sun. So that means that the wavelength of infrared radiation they emit is much longer. Because the wavelength is longer, it can't get through the glass and it just stays inside the room. So that means that that heat just gets reflected around the room. So even after the sun's gone down, the room will stay warm because the infrared radiation has become trapped. It's basically how greenhouses work. So we've got our um, short wavelength light, try and do a short wavelength light, uh, infrared radiation, sorry, which comes in through our window, gets absorbed by the wall. The wall then re-emits it at a much longer wavelength and it reflects around. And when it hits the window, it can't get through because it's longer wavelength and it just keeps travelling around inside the room. I mean, gradually it loses energy, so the room will cool down slowly, but because all that heat is bouncing around inside it, it stays warm for a long time, and that is passive heating. Okay, so that's it for our first topic in physics. Um, for the foundation, that should have been super easy, and for the high end, just a little bit more. So remember, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to ask me.